This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey. So tell me, Muse, of that plant of many resources, which wandered far and wide, the ancient plant of food, fuel, and fiber cultivated for millennia. Historically, dietary use of the raw cannabis plant brings us back in line with 34 million years of cannabis. Dr. William Courtney wrote, and I quote, while our perception and publication of these psychological properties are new, the phenomenal beneficial effects were there yesterday, last year, if not hundreds and millions of years ago. And thus, our odyssey begins. As we venture through these past 10,000 years, we will explore and discover the plant from which cannabis derived, the many uses of the plant, hemp, cannabis, hashish, cannabis in religion, cannabis in medicine, Cannabis and Uncle Sam. Ah, dear old Uncle Sam. The legislature of the state of Hawaii passed Act 228. The purpose of this act is to establish an industrial hemp pilot program to allow the cultivation and industrial hemp and distribution of its seeds in Hawaii through a limited activities by the Board of Agriculture through a pilot program for the purposes of agriculture and academic research. The legislature further finds that support for this industrial farming is occurring nationwide, in California, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Maine, Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, Oregon, South Carolina, Tennessee, Utah, Vermont, Washington, West Virginia, and of course, Hawaii. And all of those states have identified hemp as a distinct agriculture crop and removed all barriers to its production. So the Hawaii government, the Hawaii state legislature mandates doubling of production of hemp by 2020. With the hemp industry opening up, Let's get the entrepreneurs, farmers, legal, manufacturing together with technology and scientists as a community to identify and address some of the hemp industry challenges. To carry on the conversation, we are going to have a hackathon event. The purpose we want the state to grant funding to support the development of new businesses. So I have invited my dear friend, Jennifer Inouye, who is an expert. She is an IT architect. She is an expert at putting together these kinds of events where we bring ideas and people together to share their ideas, to share what can be. Uh, Victor Hugo said, there is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. The idea is here. So we want to talk to Jennifer about a hackathon. Hackathon. Right. right. OK. So Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Now, what is, first of all, what is a hackathon? So first off, a hackathon um, has typically been uh, community driven. Um, you'll take an, an idea or a, a series of ideas um, that you'll ask the community to get together and, and work on. So typically, it's, it's centered around uh, software development. It has been in the past. Um, but lately, over the last couple of years, we've seen things like um, civic hackathons appear. So we're solving you know, bigger problems and things like that. So we can break off into separate areas. And, and go off and work either for a day, a half a day, or a weekend on these particular problems. And at the end of the, uh, 
at the end of the session, you get together and you kind of give a pitch of your idea. So, so that if we are looking at my idea right. that um, we, Hawaii, the state, right. with the blessing of the legislature, that we should have a hemp industry with lots of little businesses right. because we need an industry and we need something new, not just dependent on tourism and the military. We right. need a new industry. Right. So we have a pro a, a not a product, an industry. But but a right. the hemp itself mm -hmm. can become the basis for lots of other businesses. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this coming together of these people then they bring their ideas of what their business or what kind of business they can create? Or, or their expertise. For example, I'm a software architect, so I can provide and, and um, contribute to the conversation. As, so if we break off and decide on a software application development, I can, I can um, contribute that. That's not all that I have to offer. I also have you know, diplomas in other areas as well and other interests as well. So um, we're hoping to bring out you know, um, experts in who would be legal in legal matters mm -hmm. for, cer for certain. So um, if you wanted to say, I have this idea that if I have hemp, uh, that I can take the fibers and create something. Uh, right. Something. Right. So, but we will have the legal people to say this is how you start the business. Is that? Or things to avoid when you're starting start this, business. this business. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a new and a little bit of a, a shaky ground that, that we're walking on, that we're um, emerging into. So it's good to have that voice of, you know, that sounding board uh, to identify, you know, is, is this even um, a legal uh, business that I'm talking about or, or pursuing uh, or, or should I be taking a different approach? So it's good to have those conversations right. early on in the Before you get, process. yes. Yeah. Now, again, this is just an idea. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I have is ideas. Right. Because hemp is still a Schedule One with the feds, the, we have banking issues. Right. So, is this a place that, that that can be addressed? Absolutely. There's no reason why that in itself couldn't be a topic of discussion for for further dis discussion and potentially come up with some ideas or some solutions to to tackle that particular issue. Yes, so that somehow uh, it, it, it's just crazy to me that, that the cannabis business is all cash and that, that opens the door to all kinds of problems, oh, that much sure. cash. For sure. I just wanted to say, I, was recently, um, I recently visited the Hemp Museum in Barcelona, Spain just last month and I was astonished at how established of an industry this was. We had this already. Yes. You know, and, and it just, it, it was, uh, it was heartbreaking actually to see how much, not even just in the United States, but globally as well, and how many years we've lost of, of potential knowledge and, um, and, you know, products that we can uh, further develop. I think as, as currently, there are about 25,000 products that you can make with hemp. When the it's thought just, of cutting down trees for toilet paper is a bit much. Well, 20 to 50 years it takes to grow a tree. Well, it a takes tree. four months to grow hemp, and you get four times the paper product right. out, of, out, of yeah. your, um, out of your batch or your cultivation. And it should be a no-brainer. It let's should be, yes. Save the trees. Let's save you know, um, wildlife habitats. And we, mm -hmm. could stop, we could stop doing this in the like, immediate future. And what about uh, hemp? as products, because they used to do it, building houses and mm -hmm. what have you, creating right. bricks and... Right. Hempcrete, I think, is, 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 a, is, is the latest term that they're talking about, and using hemp as the, the cinder block concrete blocks for, yeah. for building construction. That's definitely one way that, that Hawaii could benefit from this industry. What about uh, the, I don't know what you would call it, but it would look like wood. Right, um, so it's like a fiberboard, a press yes. fiberboard. Yes, definitely. So that you could build 
houses. The wonderful them. thing about using hemp is that it's, uh, it absorbs bacteria, um, it's, it's uh, mildew resistant, it's got, um, um, because it's, it's, it's got a low impact on cultivation, so we use like little to no pesticides and herbicides. So it carries that throughout the life cycle of, um, of its existence. But it, so it cleans the, the soil then. That, that in addition too. So a Fukushima, I think, should, yes. be, should be considering, um, like they did in, in Chernobyl, I believe. Chernobyl, yes, they did. Yeah, they used hemp to clean the soil. So just by, just by um, virtue of planting it, it's actually cleaning, pulling in the bad nutrients and cleaning the soil. It's got so many benefits. Oh, so, so then we should look at planting hemp not on somebody's farm where they've already worked the soil, right? where they've been growing food, we need to look at Barber's Point. It is so polluted. Hmm. I wouldn't necessarily consider, I think your idea is good, to put some hemp there. I believe that there's some to, polluted to clean, property. To clean the soil. Not no, I wouldn't want to use the, necessarily the byproducts of that. In no, I don't know like, about the byproducts, but right. I'm just looking at when you said Fukushima, I'm saying that we've got it right here. Right. We have some stuff that's oh. really bad. Absolutely. There's no reason why we couldn't be using hemp to clean the soil. Yeah. Right. And we should be. Mm -hmm. And as to whether or not we should, should I mean, there, that becomes another issue or concern. Should we uh, reintroduce uh, that product in, into the market after it's been used for that purpose? Uh, that was my next question right. was, if it's absorbed all of that stuff, Toxins, Stop. right? Then what? In theory, those toxins are inside the plant. So yes. it's lovely to see um, companies like Steep Hill have um, set up established businesses here in Hawaii because the, that would necessarily that would be um, a medium for you to test the products afterwards, just to make sure that you're not introducing something. But, but that's into what the my market. I, I don't know this. So once the plant absorbs the toxins, crap that's right. in the in the soil, what could you use the plant for? Would that work for building blocks, uh, co concrete or whatever it's called? Would it, I know you couldn't use it or shouldn't use it. Absolutely, you shouldn't enter the, 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 the body. Market, right? Yeah, the food body. Right, right. But what about building or paper or rope? rope? <laughs> exactly, yes. things that aren't going to necessarily um, affect you um, as an individual person. Um, yeah, bedding for, for plants, tires, you know, biofuels. I think biofuels bio would probably be a be great, great solution yeah, for it. Jet fuel, so you don't necessarily yeah. have to worry about any toxins left in the product at that point in time. Yes, right. and so those kinds of things um, would be absolutely wonderful that those we can think about because the amount of fuel that the military uses right here. Right. So if we were creating a biofuel for the military right here, we wouldn't have to ship it anywhere. It was going to say you're going to have a significant cost savings because you're no longer shipping the product. Right. right. And jet planes, um, oh my goodness, the, the thought of what can be. Hemp for victory. Hemp for victory, yes. Right. That, that did exist. 1943. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that, have you seen the film? I did. I watched it again this morning. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Victory, yes. Yeah, because there were so many uses within the military. Yeah. And yes, this was after it was uh, shut down by Congress in the 30s even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's take a break. Sure. And we will be back in one minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Sounds like scuba divers are the poor man's astronauts. Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Prince Dyke, the volunteer host of The Prince of Investing. Think Tech is important to me because it brings Hawaii's number one financial literacy show around the globe. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech. We'll run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can so that Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness to promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send your tax-deductible contribution 
by going to the website thinksforthinktech.carvox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii, 30 plus weekly shows, thank you, mahalo for your generosity. Aloha, and we are back with our lovely guest, Jennifer Inouye, who is a brilliant IT woman, an architect, a software architect, and we are talking about Hawaii Grown Industrial Hemp Project and a hackathon, right? So tell us, for newbies like me, what is a hackathon? Right, so like I, I had indicated, hackathons are typically um, community driven and they're uh, meant for folks to come together with some skills and help tackle some problems. So at the end of, at the end of a hackathon day, you'll get together with, um, with your groups and, and put together a solution and at the end of the day, you're gonna pitch that solution. Okay, so this one is about the industrial hemp uh, project proposed by the state of Hawaii, the Department of Agriculture. Right. And so now we're gonna come together in all different kinds of businesses and whatnot, people with ideas. Right. So they don't have to have a business, they have to have an idea. Right. And a hackathon isn't necessarily, I just wanna clarify this, isn't necessarily for an idea that's almost done and just to finish the idea. It is really for new ideas. New ideas, right. okay. Yeah. So we're looking at Okay, the state has said that um, you can buy seeds from them. Right. With a license. With this pilot program. Right. With the pilot program. And, but it also asks, what is your product? What is your finished product once you get this? Right. So the question for me is, what are the possibilities of a finished product? So I, and yeah, what are the possibilities? What can, if they, you said there are 25,000 known products. Known from products from him. Right. Okay. It's so I go to the hackathon mm -hmm. and I say, wow, this is great. I would like to create, I don't know, biofuels. We just said biofuels. Right. And there is a, a refinery sitting empty at Barber's Point, at, at Camp, I'm sorry, Campbell Industrial. Okay. It's sitting there empty. Right. So I said, well, I, I know where to get the skills and the, the expertise to do this. Now, how do I, where am I going to get startup monies? How am mm. I going to create a business? What, are the, what do I need to do to be a part of the pilot project? What do I need to do? Um, it, are those the things we can get at a hackathon? Can we look at all the different possibilities? Right, so you probably want to narrow down to, depending on the it, it number of attendees, but you probably want to narrow it down to say six or eight ideas. And I have set up a Facebook page called Hawaiian Hemp Hackathon, and the hopes of that is, and anybody in the community can, can come and can join. But my hopes is to invite anybody to, to pitch some ideas, because we're going to try and group those before the event. Um, in, in hopes of getting people to come to talk about something in particular, right. like, as, as you mentioned, uh, biofuels. I didn't realize there was, there was an empty container that's ready for use. So that's a great idea, yeah, because you've already got faculties. You've yeah. got, you probably got some, some folks in, in the industry who could who know what, yeah. Who know the industry and can contribute to the conversation. Right. And we welcome and invite those folks to, mm -hmm. to come and attend and, and, um, and contribute to the conversation. Yeah, and it, so if you say, well, um, I design, not me, but if the person says, I am in the clothing, I design Hawaiian fabrics. Right. Is this a product that can become the fabric that I need? Absolutely. Rather than having to send my designs to Thailand mm -hmm. to have them done. No, that's a really great question. Um, one thing to take into consideration, if it's a new industry that you're starting up, there's probably gonna be more expensive to produce it in the first year. Mm -hmm. as, you're, as you're finding your efficiencies and things like that. So it may still be cheap to outsource it elsewhere, but to have that industry uh, and, and the, the means and the wherewithal to be able to create that industry on the island, that's only benefits Hawaii and Hawaii's future. 
yes. you know, so, generation. So yeah, I can't wait to see Hawaiian um, hemp aloha shirts. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. And so there's all kind of products, 25,000 products. So I'm sure Plus. there's 25,000 ideas out there. Right. If people know that this is a possibility, that this is a game that they can play in. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how many people know what the state is doing, but I think that it's time for us as a state to look at this industry, the entire industry, right. not just one little piece, the entire right. industry, so that we're not totally dependent on tourism and the military. Right. It, and I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful idea, and who knows what kinds of ideas that will spin and spawn out of this. I know yes. that's the part that just excites me. And it does, me it does. Yeah. And it's so synergistic because there are so many businesses already um, that you, you can pick up and, and, um, and create businesses on top of. Right, there's a whole beauty and health, um, oh, uh, beauty goodness, industry, yes. right? Topical sunscreens. Um, hemp seed oil has a 6% sunscreen already. So you can use that as a base sunscreen and then get rid of those things that are killing off or bleaching the coral. Right. We're done, problem yeah. solved, and we make it locally. So yes. don't worry about that. We had to take it away from you from the airport because it's banned here in Hawaii. You can definitely buy something local that's not going to harm the coral. Oh my goodness, that is incredible. Mm -hmm. And just think what it does to healing and how much money the state pays for people in the ambulance and emergencies and whatnot that have damaged um, sores that right. if we were using this topical, mm -hmm. it would save so much money. Right, and I know we're just talking about ideas here, but hey, wouldn't it be great if at some point in time down the future, if somebody has their 329 card and they have an excessive amount of, um, of, of plants that they grow, but to be able to do donate that so that it can be made into, as you said, a topical, and give it to the anybody that's homeless that homeless, needs it. Yes, just, just that, that would save a fortune that the state spends, right. what is it, 13 hospital visits annually per year for the mm -hmm. chronic homeless? So, yeah, definitely. That, yeah, because, and, and little children in school that fall down and there's always right. scratches and what right. have you. Right. And this, yes, so, at least, so you know, this won't make you high. Right. It, yeah, right. this is totally safe, right. won't make you high. Correct, yes, yeah. we're not talking about We're not talking yeah. about, right. about cannabis, we are talking about hemp. So, and All hemp of products. The, yeah, and hemp products, yeah. yeah. And um, we have boats, 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 all kind of boats. And you mentioned rope. Boats need rope. I wish I could remember how many thousand yards of rope it takes on a single ship in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But we have tr uh, tour boats. We have personal boats. We have uh, Coast Guard. We have all kinds of, this is an island state. Right. So just think of what you could sell. You can immediately tap into markets. markets. Absolutely. Yes. The market is there. You don't have to make it up. Right. Yeah. And even talking about making up um, industries, um, using a 3D printer, you can make a hemp filament out of, um, out of hemp. So the hemp filament is the ink, so to speak, that goes into the 3D printer. So you're basically making things. So you're talking about using your imagination. You can make, um, with using a 3D printer, anything out of just using the hemp filament product. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You can do a, a breathing mask for somebody who has like um, uh, breathing problems, um, sleeping problems. You can take a 3D image of their face, print out a 3D mask, done. It's amazing. Oh yeah. my <laughs> I know, it my tail waves when I think about what kind of things you can make with a 3D printer, yeah. yeah. Oh, that is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I'm excited, not that I know how to do any of this. <laughs> right. I don't know how to do it. But just think that this Hawaii-grown hemp industry, right. and it's ours, we grow it to, make it. it to make it, and anything that sells Hawaii, but made in Hawaii hemp sells. Hemp and the Hawaii brand, absolutely. The Hawaii brand. Yeah, I'm yes. so excited to, to see, and, and even just thinking of the innovation over the it next is. couple of years. It is, it is, it is exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful opportunities ahead of us. Yes, it is. So, I, I'm, I'm excited about this. Now, let's do this one more time. It's a hackathon. Right. And that can be found on the Facebook uh, page called the Hawaiian Hemp Hackathon. Hawaiian 
Hawaii or Hawaiian? Hawaiian Hemp Hackathon. Hawaiian Hemp. I did hackathon. a short name of it called uh, Hawaii, sorry, Hemp Hack High. Hemp. <laughs> it's just a short name. You got to have to like have a little hashtag, that little short descriptor. <laughs> hemp High? Hemp Hack High. Hi. Yep. So 10 characters there. Yep. We're, as in Hawaii. Hi. Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> 10 characters in there, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, so you go to this. So that when we get closer to the event, and we're going to be probably a little, be a little bit of a social um, dialogue going on, right. we'll use, probably use that, that hashtag so as well. So if I just go to this Facebook page, I can register and say I'm interested? or Right. So we're still uh, trying to generate some, some interest and ideas and, and some experts in, in industries to come and, uh, and express interest as well as, as finding and locating a facility. So yes, you can go there to get more information. Please submit your ideas. We're really looking forward to I'm excited. This is exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. I had a tail just, just, just the thought that we can, a new industry, and everybody, homegrown, homegrown yes. industry. Yeah. It is. It's exciting. It <laughs> is exciting. Yeah. So it's yeah. Hawaii seeds. So these are indigenous to Hawaii. Or will be, yes. Or will be, yeah. the seeds. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you get these from the health department. Right. They're working, the department of they're working on now to curate those seeds. The seeds. The seeds from Amsterdam might not necessarily grow, grow in, this. in this climate. Yeah. yeah. And we can have three, up to three crops a year, which gives us a huge advantage. Over, over the continental U.S., which typically can have one crop. Because yeah. of the climate. Because of the climate. So because the climate is different on each island, would we have that many different varieties of hemp? That's a good question. And we won't really know the term what variety means until we've lab tested and, and had a look at, at what um, the contents are. But I believe that that would be the case. Yeah. So we would have Kauai and, and each? Kona. And, Kona yeah. hemp, right? Yeah, Kauai hemp <laughs> right, and right. Molokai. Right. Molokai mm -hmm. with its right. Hawaiian name, yep. of course. Because Hawaiian hemp, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is incredible. It just warms me up to think, yes, of that future industry. But yes. Mm -hmm. It is exciting. Uh, right. Not that I know how to grow anything. Right. <laughs> or make anything. But right. it is so exciting to think of what it can be. Mm -hmm. And when you put together that many people with all these different expertise, right. it'll just grow. I'm yeah. back to Victor Hugo right. saying there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And I believe it was Roosevelt who said that if you, uh, to solve a big problem, make it bigger. And to, to me, I interpret that to mean involve more people in the conversation. Yes. And one thing to make a um, hackathon successful is to factor in what are you going to do after the event. Right. And that's something that, that I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, how, how do we go forward with this? We have some ideas. Banking industry is a bit of a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, we can talk about banking as, a, as an industry is, is in the hackathon, but, you know, Echo. what can we kind of either ask of or hope from either state or... Yeah. Listen, we are about out of time. Mm -hmm. but however, will you come back... And we'll see who else we can will join us to right. talk about the possibilities of funding all of this. Would you be so kind to do that? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Well, it's been a real pleasure being with you, Jennifer. Okay. And we look forward to doing this again. Thank you. It's been Thank a you. Aloha. <laughs>